What's up, fight fans? This is Kurt DeVille with Counter Punch Boxing News, and I have some new news concerning Chris Eubank Jr., Connor Ben, and the promoter of Chris Eubank Jr., the team. Get this. Uh, Chris Eubank's promoter is frustrated by the Ben drug scandal, and he says, I don't know a bloody thing that's going on. Kel Sutherland feels like he had his team, him and his team are being kept in the dark as it relates to the Connor Ben drug scandal. Sutherland, the head of Wasserman Boxing, recently saw his charge middleweight Chris Eubank Jr. miss out on a high anticipated 157 pound catch weight fight between him and Connor Ben that seemed to capture the imagination of the British British public, but Ben was revealed to have tested positive for clomiphene, a banned substance, a few days before the night of the fight, sending the fight into oblivion. The news was broken by the Daily Mail, and it was only after the outlets reporting that the British Boxing Board of Control refused to put their um what does that say? My eyes are getting bad. Um put their thoughts on the fight, and that's the events promoters decided to cancel it. Ben, moreover, was discovered to have tested positive for the same substance earlier in the summer. Both Ben and his promoter, Eddie Hearn, misled the public for weeks by creating the perception that Ben had failed only one test. Ben was has only has been found Wait, who has been roundly denounced by boxing fans is currently being investigated by UCAD and the WBC. The latter organization will reportedly conclude its hearing on the fighter at the end of the month. Meanwhile, Sarlin cannot help but express his impatience with what he feels has been an unnecessarily drawn out process. He says, we're bored because this has been the most drawn out process since the Treaty of Varsalis, Sarlin said. What are you waiting for? I don't know anything that's happening. There's absolutely frustration because I don't know a bloody thing on what's going on. Transparency is one thing, but speed, Solomon said. Why wasn't there a hearing two or something weeks before the test? We just walked into a fight and no one said anything. The board didn't say anything. That wasn't going ahead. Those things, why weren't we called? The results, the test results came in Friday night. Why weren't, why were we not at 9 a.m. in a room with, govern, at the, with the governing body going through what was happening? Could we have saved the fight or saved the night for everyone on the undercard and bring Junior a different opponent? In that fact, the stage we did it, that's my thoughts on it. Those are the words of Team Eubank Jr., Kel Solomon. Let me counterpunch. I got to agree with it. I think, you know, we have seen recently that Connor Ben came out saying, I am not a crook. You know what I mean? I'm innocent. You know, I won't forgive any of you guys. I, I won't forget all this shit. And I'm like, look, you can't get mad at the public on something that had that got out. You, that's the public's natural response to cheaters. You want to believe me? It's his fucking response. How do I know that? Remember Jarrell w Miller? Jarrell Miller was fried, cooked, fried, refried, down, okay? Burnt to a crisp by the public by failing the drug tests. And it was similar. Motherfucker, you had three things in your system. Okay, who was one of the guys with the pitchfork and the torch? Connor Ben. Right? He was crucifying Jarrell Miller. I mean, that's not what I'm about. Like, why couldn't he, you know, that, that's that's just disgusting. I, I couldn't do that. Well, you're in that seat now. So you can't get mad at the public when you were the public. You had the same uh, stance on a cheater like Jarrell Miller as everybody else did. So stop. Let's stop the bullshit for a minute. You know, now he's saying, I won't forgive anybody. Well, how about this? How about you recognize and understand what people and how people should feel based on what they heard? Not what they know. And what Kel Sutherland, Team Eubanks, is saying is that, hey, we should be kept in the light, not in the dark. Okay? 
because we don't know what's going on with this and why is it taking so long? Bars. <laughs> you know, seriously, I mean, we have a situation here with, you know, the Boxing Board of Control, the UK, the WBC, and, and, and you, you're looking at it like, okay, what is taking you motherfuckers so long? What is taking you? You know, you you have Conor Ben coming out, hey, I'm innocent, I've proved it, I, you know, and this, that, and the other, I want an apology. And I'm like, okay, what are y'all doing exactly? You know what I mean? What's going on in this process? Okay, if the public don't know, at least the person that he was going to fight or attempting to fight, that side should definitely know. Okay? The other side should definitely know what's going on. And then they're pissed because they're like, okay, we could have brought somebody else in if you wouldn't bullshit at this this long time. And they did. Eddie Hearn misled the public. And he know he took a strike for that shit. He, yeah, he took, he, he got a demerit for that shit. Connor Ben got two, he got one. Okay. If you ask other promoters, you know, they're all in the same boat, which they should be. You know, that keeping quiet shit, that this, that, that, you know, if that was anybody else, and Eddie Hearn, another person that crucified Jarrell Miller and said, oh, well, I'm going to sue him. He owes me money. That's despicable. That's disgusting. He tried to hurt my friend because Anthony Joshua was not only my client, but he's my friend. And he just never needs to be in the sport of boxing again and this, that, and the other. But then yet your fighter tests positive for whatever the fuck and you keep quiet. You didn't say anything about that. Okay. Just like he didn't say shit about Dillian White's weird ass test when he fought Oscar Rivas. And Oscar Rivas' side is just like Sal Callen, Sal, Cal Solomon's side with Chris Eubank now. They are the representation of how they feel. They, they feel the same way. Guess what? It's with the same promoter, just a different fighter. Go figure. Okay, so it does look bad in the public eye. Because they're like, they, dude, we could have found someone else. And got at least got my fighter paid. I did all this damn training. I lost all this damn weight. I made this damn weight. Now I don't even have somebody to participate. Bars. I don't have anybody to fight. I'm a fighter. I need money. You don't know what Chris Eubank Jr. did. You know he loves going to Dubai. He might have went there and rocked out with his cock out. Okay, he might have spent a lot of money down there. And then he's like, yo, I'm going to make two, three million dollars. I'm probably going to clear 1.8 million pounds. I'm going to be chilling. I'm going to be in a bank. Then I'm going to go back to Dubai and I'm going to do the same shit. <laughs> but I got a fight coming. Now you find he goes back and everybody bullshits him. He thinks he's going to fight. And then all this happens. So it's absolutely crazy. And it's absolutely uh, understandable that Team Eubank uh, should feel this way. And I am questioning that too. What is taking so long? But anyway, <clears throat> you guys tell me what you think of Team Eubank uh, impatient and asking what's the holdup on the decision. Of course, please subscribe. And you guys been counterpunch. Peace.